Welcome back everybody, this is Mr. Navarrete, and today I'll be going over the organic nomenclature number one. So, let's get started. Before, we were just in charge of identifying the group. Now we're going to be in charge of actually naming the molecule. Before we were just in charge of finding the functional group present in the molecule, but now we're going to be in charge of actually naming the molecule. So let's look at our first one. We have a three carbon chain. So we know that it's going to be an alkane. How do we call carbon chains that are three carbons long? For our first one, we have a carbon chain fully saturated with hydrogens. We know that it's three carbons long, so it's going to be prop. Because it's fully saturated, it's going to be an alkane. So I'm going to call it propane. Next one, we have a four carbon chain with a hydroxide. So we know it's going to be an alcohol. Since it's four carbons, it's going to be butanol. If it was just an alkane, it would be butane, but it had to change the ending for an alcohol. Next up, we have a carbon with a halide group. So since it's only one carbon and there's no double bonds or anything, I know it's going to be an alkane, but because of the halogen, we have to identify which one it is. So we're going to call this one bromomethane, bromo for the bromine and methane for that one carbon chain. Next one, we have three carbons in a circle. So just like our one before, it is gonna be a propane, but to be more specific, since it's in a circle, we're gonna call it cyclopropane. And this is where our naming is gonna be a little bit more specific. So we have another three carbon chain. So we know that it's gonna be propane, but we have two bromines attached to it. So this is where we have to be super specific in our naming. So the name for this one would be 2,2-dibromopropane. So breaking down the name. We have dibromo because we have two bromines and the two and the two are just to specify on which carbon it's gonna be on. The naming, we can start, we're gonna start on the one closest to the bromine groups or to the other functional group. So it would be one, two, three. If you started the numbers on the opposite side, notice how you still end up on the same carbon. So two, two, dibromopropane. Our next one, identifying the group, we do have an aldehyde. So two carbons, that's gonna be an ethane. So giving it the proper ending, ethanol. For our next one, we have a three carbon chain. So it is gonna be a type of propane. Identifying the functional group. Well, that's gonna be a ketone, double bonded oxygen, two carbon chains on the other side. So the proper name for this one would be propanone. Again, prop the propan in the beginning for the propane and just changing the ending to show the ketone. Our next one is kind of an easy one. We have a single carbon, so we know it's going to be a type of methane, but since we have our OH group there, we know that it's going to have to be methanol. Our next one, we have two carbons, so we know it's going to be a type of ethane, but because of our carboxylic acid group, this is going to be called ethanoic acid. Hopefully the different colors help you see how we are adding those endings. That way you can get more comfortable making those replacements yourself. For our next one, we have a carbon chain and another carbon chain. And between them connecting is an oxygen. So we know it's going to be a type of ether. Now it's just naming what it is. So the two carbon chains that are attached to it are both going to be ethanes. So since we have two ethanes, we're going to say it's going to be diethyl ether. Diethyl meaning two and ether because that's the type of functional group present. For our next one. Again, we're also going to have another ether 
but the naming for this is going to be a little bit different since one chain is bigger than the other one. So starting off with the smallest chain first, this is going to be a methane and our other one is going to be an ethane. So we can combine this to be called methoxy ethane. Methoxy for this chain and the ethane for the chain on the other side. For 12, recognizing the group, that's going to be an ester. We have a methane on one side and we also have an ethane. That's where the ester is going to be. So properly writing this one out with the smallest chain first. Methyl ethanoate. Our next one is going to be a one carbon chain. So it's going to have to do something with methane. Recognizing the functional group. Well, that's going to be an amine. So proper name for this would just be methylamine. For our next one, we do have a double bond present. So it's going to be a type of alkene. Since there's two carbons, we're going to call this one ethene. For our next one, we have an alkene, but we also have two halogens attached to those carbons. So properly naming it, it would be one, two for the one and two, where the halogens are going to be. Dichloro, since we have two chloride ions on there. Ethene for our ethene group in the center. For our next one, looking at how many carbons we have, we have one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be a type of pentane. Because we have our double bonded oxygen and a hydrogen, we know that's going to be an aldehyde. So then that's just going to be pentanal. For our next one, we have a three carbon chain and we have our alcohol group there and we have to specify on which carbon it is one two three so it's going to be on carbon two so this is going to be two propanol our next one we have a carbon but we have four chlorines attached to it so to signify what it is it's going to be tetrachloro tetra meaning four and since we only have a one carbon chain, methane at the end, tetrachloromethane. Our next one, we have to count how many carbons we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we have to figure out on which carbon our ketone is on. So it's going to be on one, two, three. So we're going to call this one three hexanone. Now, you might have starting the counting on this side, three, four, and called it four hexanone. But remember, we're going to start our counting on the side closest to where that group is. So one, two, three. Next one, we have one carbon, and this is going to be an aldehyde. So our bond here, or our molecule, would be called methanol. A simple one, we have two carbon chain fully saturated with hydrogens, so it's just a simple alkane, so ethane. Next one, four carbon chain fully saturated with hydrogens, simple alkane, butane. Bute meaning four carbons. For our next one, we have one, two, three, four carbons. So another form of butane. But because of the alcohol, we're going to call this one butanol. Now, we're not attaching a number to this since it's going to be on the first carbon. Next one, we have our triple bonded carbon there. So it's going to be an alkyne. So the proper name for this one would be ethyne. Next. We have one, two, three, four, five carbons. So pent for five. And since they're all fully saturated with hydrogens, we're just going to say it's pentane. Next, we have one, two, three, four carbons. We have our triple bonded carbon here. So since it's on between the first one, we're just going to call this one butyne. One, two, three carbons. So it's going to be a type of propane. We have our thiol group there. So we're going to call this one propyl thiol. 
Next, we have our aromatic or arene group there. We also have our halogen there. So the proper name for this one, this whole molecule, we're going to call it benzene. And because of the bromine present, well, we're just going to call it bromobenzene. Since it's only one, we don't have to specify on which carbon it's going to be on. Since if you rotate it, moved it around, it would still be that same structure. For the next one, this one might look very familiar if you've taken AP Bio, but just breaking it down based on the functional groups, we have our amine group, we have our carboxylic acid, and because there's two carbons, we know that it's going to have F somewhere in there. Adding everything together, the amino, F, and for the carboxylic acid, we know it's going to end in oic acid, so it would be amino ethanoic acid. Now, the term that you are most likely familiar with, if you've taken, again, AP Bio, would be glycine. For our next one, we have this beautiful chain of carbons that we have the pleasure of naming. So, how we tackle these is by finding the longest chain. So, number all of your carbons, find the longest chain. The longest chain that I found is here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 carbons. So then we just have to figure out which is attached where. Well, we have a methyl group attached at carbon 3. We have another methyl group attached at carbon 4. And we have an ethyl group attached at carbon 6. So to properly name this, you need to put them in alphabetical order, at least for the chains on the side. So we would name this 6-ethyl for that carbon chain there on carbon 6, 3-4-dimethyl for the two methyl groups present at carbon 3 and carbon 4, and because our longest chain was 9 carbons, it would be nonane. And that's it. Again, just keep practicing your flashcards. That way you can identify the functional groups and are better able to name these molecules. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to reach out. I'm here to help. Other than that, stay safe and I'll see y'all next time.